The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. 1-800-610-7035, worldwide toll-free. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com on MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com, and our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. And don't forget, if you'd like to listen to the Exxon Radio Show, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year, yes, you can do that as well at www.xzbn.net forward slash live. HTM. My guest this hour is Dr. John Rossi, and he is a veterinarian, a biologist, and a father, but not someone who has been political. However, he is now speaking up because of changes he has witnessed that are making it more difficult for him to practice medicine and for pet owners to afford the care they once provided for their beloved animals. Uh, he is, as I said, a doctor of veterinary medicine, a small, uh, is a small exotic animal practitioner and a graduate of the University of Florida. And we're going to be talking to the good doctor today about his uh, his books entitled The Freedom Fairy Tale. Joining me now from Florida is Dr. John Rossi. And Dr. John, welcome to the Exxon. Well, thanks, Rob. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. And um, you know what? I have a lot of respect for uh, veterinarian uh, doctors. I was the uh, the communications director for the SBCA and you know what? People really, I, I think, unless you're a pet owner, you don't know the care, the love, the compassion that you veterinarians have. So my hat is off to every veterinarian. Well, thank you very much, Rob. We we try to do the best we can. And I think that's where this story may have um, most recently started mm-hmm. um, a few years after. Did you want me to tell a story? or? Yeah, uh, we, we've got about two minutes before I have to take a break. Okay. Uh, well, basically what happened was I, a couple of years ago before this story was written, um, a, a nice couple came in mm-hmm. and they, um, you know, I, we diagnosed that their golden retriever had cancer. Oh. And so we uh, went into the room expecting full well to break the news to them and for them to be very upset. Mm-hmm. And what happened kind of shook me to the core. It was they both started crying, which was kind of expected. Mm-hmm. But then the husband started. He said, you know, Doc, a few years ago, I owned my own business. My wife had a job. We were doing great. We had another dog that needed eight or $9,000 worth of care, right. and we gave it to her, and she survived. Now I've lost my job. My wife has lost – excuse me. He, he said, I've lost my business. My wife lost her job. We can't do anything for our pet right now. You're just going to have to go ahead and put her to sleep. And I was struck with what had happened that, you know, this was a slap in the face. This Mm -hmm. was reality. And for the first time, I had really felt the the poverty kind of sneaking in to what I did every day and people telling me, absolutely, no, I can't afford to treat my animal. Wow. And it it bothered me, and I went home, and I, I... I, I tried to put it out of my mind, and that's when my daughter asked me, you know, Dad, what's going on? Why is there so much fighting going on on the radio? And my daughter was 13 at the time, and I couldn't think of a good way to explain it to her, and I fell asleep, and that's when I had this wild dream. All right, we're going we're gonna to do a bit of a cliffhanger here, John. Uh, we have to take a two-minute commercial break. Please stand by. Exonation. Nation, Dr. John Rossi is our special guest this hour. Here's his website www.freedomfairytale.com. That's www.freedom, 
fairytale.com. 1-800-610-7035 worldwide toll free. Email xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. And don't forget, I'm going to be at the Body Soul Spirit. Whoops, there we go. Body Soul Spirit Expo at the International Center here in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, 6900 Airport Road, right across the street from the uh, Pearson International Airport, May the 25th to the 27th. For more information, www.bodyspiritsoulexpo.com. My name is Rob McConnell. Dr. John Rossi is my guest this hour. We'll both be back in two minutes. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. And welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. Dr. John Rossi is my special guest this hour. His website, www.freedomfairytale.com. All right, John, so so you, your daughter, who is 13, asked you what was wrong with this world. She's heard a lot of fighting on the radio, and, and you know, you had this 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 family come to you with their, with their dog who... You know, cancer, God bless it, and, and you did everything. And the guy basically said, hey, listen, I, I, I can't afford it. The best thing to do would be to put the dog to sleep. And you went to sleep that night. You had a dream, and what happened? Well, um, it was a wild dream. I, mm-hmm. I jumped out of bed. It was about 4 in the morning. I jumped out of bed. I could not. I mean, I was just struggling to find a piece of paper, find a, you know, find a pencil, mm-hmm. jot this down. I could not identify who the characters were, but basically there were two families that were feuding with each other, and they had children. And I I could recognize characteristics in the children, but I, I didn't know who they were. I could kind of recognize characteristics in the parents, but I didn't know who they were. And finally, after about an hour of going through this, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this looks like basically – you know, almost like a summary of the struggle that's going on in our country today. And the different children were different philosophies or different factions. 
and the parents uh, turned out to be capitalism and freedom and socialism and communism. And their children, as I could identify them, the children mm -hmm. of um, capitalism and freedom, and their, their characteristics of these children, independence, hard work, self-worth, faith, hope, and charity were the children of capitalism and freedom, the initial children that I could recognize. And, and then the children of communism and socialism were poverty, despair, hopelessness, suffering, and repression. And later on, Capitalism and freedom had some other children that were not very happy with their situation in life, and they turned against their parents. And what they did was they kind of allowed, if you will, a home invasion mm -hmm. by uh, socialism and communism. They opened the door. And as it says in the book, it was very easy to do because capitalism and freedom always left their door open for everyone. So, I mean, it's it's a... It's a very simple-looking story on, on the outside. What happens at the end was a twist that I never expected. And um, it, it, it's for children in the sense that it's, it's been sort of rendered in a cartoon-type mm -hmm. form. But yet when you, look at the, when you look at the details, and it will make some people mad, when you look at the details of who the characters are and how they interact with each other, it really tells a very deep story. What does this tell us about society when a 13-year-old goes to her dad and says, what's going on in the world today, Dad? What does this tell us about the state of, of affairs that the world is in? Well, I mean, it is, it is a scary thing. and I think mm -hmm. we're going through some very difficult uh, times right now, and it's not just financial. It's, yeah. it's a, a social breakdown that's occurring and um, I think a lot of children are being raised by the television and yeah. being raised by the computer and, and Hollywood or whoever is it is that's communicating with them over the Internet. And it's there's many broken homes and, uh, you know, the influence of the father is reduced in many cases. And and, and I really and truly think that um, – Many children are, are very confused, very misled, and, and it's really a bad situation. So how do we change it, John? How are some well, ideas that, that you have that, that we could change this and make this a better country, a better world for the 13-year-olds of today? Well, I think it's, it's going to have to start with education, but mm -hmm. by the answer is not to feed them um, pablum that's artificial and and basically as I see it it's a lie we need to teach them the truth we need to give them a good background mm -hmm. in math and science and and biology and let them be aware that you know there's a limited amount of energy out there and, and it's natural for competition to occur mm -hmm. and we need to do you know we need to Yes, we, we don't want to be an uncivilized society. We don't want to, to, to not take care of our weak and take care of our sick. But by the same token, we can't shut down the producers. We can't make it impossible for them to function because we know, we know that socialism has been tried 28 times, and now we're going on 29 if you count what's going on in the United States right now. Mm -hmm. And that every time that it's been tried, it has failed. And, and in places where people argue that socialism does occur and it is functioning, there's usually an underlying factor, such as, let's say, in Norway, where everybody in Norway gets a check for a, approximately $3,000 a year because of oil production. Or there's some other large corporation that is, is uh, having influence, economic influence on that company, mm -hmm. on that country, and helping these people to survive. And when I talk to children, I try to teach them that capitalism is not a bad thing, like we hear some youngsters in some schools say right now. And, and, I, and I say, look, let's, let's, let's talk, let's pretend. I want you to pretend you're a cheetah and you're on the plains of Africa and you're looking at that Thompson's gazelle over there and you're saying, you know, I want to get that Thompson's gazelle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chase that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crawl on my belly for 50 yards. Then I'm going to run like crazy. I'm going to run the risk that I'm not going to get that Thompson's gazelle, or I might get kicked in the head. And 
but I'm going to take that chance. So the cheetah chases that Thompson's gazelle. It grabs the Thompson's gazelle. It successfully uh, kills it and eats it. And I asked them, I said, do you think that that cheetah made more energy than it spent in getting that Thompson's gazelle? And the kids say, yes. I said, well, then that cheetah is a capitalist. So now let's take this one step further. If we're going to be looking at you know, money as equivalent to energy, so let's take it one step further. Does that cheetah have to worry about anything? They say, yeah. I said, what does it have to worry about? They say, well, the lions might come and steal it. Yeah. What about uh, the hyenas? Yeah. What about the vultures? Yeah. Life's not easy. There's, there's natural competition that occurs. And, and so then we move on to the next step. I say, well, can we solve all of the problems for this cheetah? Can we provide it with all of its food? Can we take care of all of its parasites? Can we do everything for that cheetah to make sure that nobody's going to steal anything from it and it's going to have a perfect life? Mm-hmm. And, and they struggle. And I say, well, yeah, we, we could provide all those things, but you know what they call that? It's called a cage in a zoo. And so my, my, my uh, educational efforts with children up to this point have been to try to draw parallels with nature. And I use several different, you know, being a biologist, you know, I, I have a, a strong feel for, you know, how what goes on in nature is very similar to what goes on. Like, you know, the, the ecology is very similar to the economy, if you will, um, that people have to deal with every day. And, and I try to get this idea, to cro- uh, you know, idea across to, to, to youngsters when I speak to them. And, you know, when I, when I go back and people say, well, you know, the, the words in these books, in this book, is, is too big for kids to understand. And I, and I, and I say, well, I want, to, I want to tell you a story. Many years ago, I was eight, nine years old. I lived on the Navy base in Key West, Florida. And I got to watch hundreds of Cubans coming ashore in 1963. And I asked the soldiers and the sailors, I said, what are they running away from? Mm-hmm. They said, communism. And I said, oh, man, he must be a really bad guy. And I didn't, you know, they were telling me a a philosophy. They were telling me a a, a system of government, and I was associating associating it with a person. And so when I I think that planted a seed that kind of lay dormant for many, many years, and that I began, you know, when I had this dream, I thought, well, heck, these words are too big for, for kids to understand. But I think if kids are exposed to the words in this book and exposed to how they interact with each other, that it will help them to understand that the best system that's out there, the system that creates all these good things, is capitalism. And no, it's not perfect. And no, it's not always fair. You can be in the wrong place at the wrong time, whether it's in nature or whether it's in the economy. And and I say, but in both systems, whether you're looking at socialism and communism, or whether you're looking at capitalism or freedom, certain individuals benefit. Certain individuals rise to the top, whether it's you know the Communist Party in you know China, or whether it's the you know the the big uh, money, you know the big factories, the big corporations in America. You know the money goes to the top. Cert- there's certain you know few individuals at the top of the food chain, if you will. So it's, the, it's, no, it's, it's not, you know, the rich get yes. richer than poor get poorer. Yeah, in either system. But I mm-hmm. think in a capitalist system, which is closer to Mother Nature, more people have a chance to succeed than in the communist system or the socialist system. And I, I think it was Margaret Thatcher who said socialism works until they run out of someone else's money. Mm-hmm. And, and basically, you know, if we equate money to energy and natural systems – We can look at this and say, this is so simple. How can anybody want to switch to a socialist system? And I just don't understand it. You know, it's it's very difficult for me. I I say there are tens of millions of people who are like in this book. They're like the confused, angry children. They don't have a clear understanding of the big picture. And – no matter what we do, we're not going to be able to reach these people. And um, one uh, one author, I think his name was uh, Dr. Lyman Rossiter, um, he described this as an acquired set of irrational beliefs that lip, 
Have you read that or have you heard of that? John, stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Interesting topic. Okay. Exonation, our guest this hour is Dr. John Rossi, talking about his book entitled The Freedom Fairy Tale. His website is www.freedomfairytale.com. And uh, John Rossi and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you're going to be at the Body, Soul, Spirit Expo in Mississauga, May 25th to the 27th, drop by and see me. I'll give you a complimentary DVD that has the X Chronicles newspaper and some other great stuff. From us to you, we'll be back. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. This is The Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. Our guest this hour is Dr. John Rossi. We're talking to Dr. John about his book entitled Freedom Fairy Tale. His website is www.freedomfairytale.com. And John, I have to ask you, why do you think or why do you believe that feminism is one of the causes that are that's ruining America? Well... First of all, let me explain that um, there are several children, and these are the children of capitalism and freedom. Mm-hmm. As we, as I, as I looked at these children, I began to think about how is it that I included feminism and environmentalism and animal rights activism um, as children who are angry and confused, who turned against their parents. You have to go back and, and think about where where did you know, how could feminism have existed without capitalism and without freedom? And if we go places where there is no capitalism and no freedom, there is no feminism. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to say we've got to start by saying there's a definite connection between capitalism and and freedom and feminism. I think about you know ninety nine percent of all of the inventions that have that have been created have come from capitalist systems and and these inventions have kind of erased the biological um, uh, roles if you will mm-hmm. not reversed but but equalized or changed the original biological roles that existed in nature and and that's all well and fine I don't have any problems with that uh, but technology for instance has equalized everything if you will and and what we see is that, the feminists, as the the leaders at least, mm-hmm. have aligned themselves with the socialists. They have aligned themselves with the Democrat Party, which now has become primarily socialist in nature. And so in that respect, um, feminism has 
become an enemy of capitalism and freedom, if you will. Um, and think about places where, again, where these children do not exist, in places where there is no freedom, there, there is no feminism, and in places where there is no capitalism, there is no feminism. So I have to include feminism in this argument. And then think about environmentalism and think about radical animal rights activism. Mm -hmm. If we go to places where there is no capitalism or freedom, those don't exist either. Think about uh, so. What are you what, what are you North, saying, John? Are, not, not, are you saying that we have too many rights and freedoms? No, not at all. What I'm saying is, but that you you can't you can't you can't have uh, feminism. You can't have. Uh, let me see. Uh, you you can't have environmentalism. You you can't have liberalism if you don't have freedoms and and rights. Exactly, and so and there should be a healthy discussion that occurs. At all levels, however, what we're seeing here is that these groups are aligning and essentially shutting down the capitalist system and moving us towards socialism. But why? And if you look at the back but, of the book, you'll see what happens to these. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, John. But what you're saying, I, I'm getting mixed signals here. I'm saying, uh, you know, I'm hearing that you're saying that. These these groups are causing us to to go from one side to the other, yet these groups have the right to do what they're doing. Now, if they don't have the right, that's one thing. But they do have the right, and if they're able to go from one side or uh, from one party to the next or one way to the next, that's their right. And it's up to the rest of the population. You know, that's represent true. It is certainly up to the yeah, population. However, exactly. a father will not let his children do what hurts them. And that's exactly what's happening here. But if you look at the biblical time, the asylum. well, that's the way it's been done from day one. Look at the Bible. If God, sure. crea if God created everybody in his image, we're all his children, how many people, how many Egyptians were killed by God? How many people are, are have been killed throughout history in the name of religion? Sure. Well, uh, again, um, I'm a, a firm believer in freedom of choice, mm -hmm. and I, I truly believe that people have the choice to go which, in whichever direction they seek to go in. Right. But having said that, I have a strong understanding from basic physics and biology and that I know that mm -hmm. there is not an unlimited amount of energy, and that if we but what we're doing right now in, in, in the United States is essentially suicide. And, and that's okay. We're looking at – if I was to look at the United States as a patient, mm -hmm. I would say our doctors have prescribed that um, you know, we have a patient who's bleeding with open wounds, and the doctors have come in and prescribed, well, let's continue to allow the patient to bleed. Let's make sure that we don't bandage the wounds. We leave the wounds open so that infection can continue to come in. Let's make sure that – we don't give the patient any energy or food. Let's make sure that we have the immune system turn on itself. I mean, we're essentially, we're closing, you know, we're, sh we're shrinking our military. We're turning a blind eye to our sources of energy. We're breaking up the family um, by supporting its breakup by, by the government saying, yes, we're going to take care of you. We're going to support well, wait a uh, and encourage oh. weakness. Um, and in every aspect of our society, we're not going to encourage. Let, let, all right, let me ask you something. Have you ever run for yes. public office? I've never been in public office. No. So, been, all right. So, by not being in public, by not being in the public office or not running for public office, yes. aren't you part of the problem instead of part of the solution? Well, I I look at what I do as a veterinarian as being an important thing. I am just a, mm -hmm. a, a hardworking individual. You know, there's an old expression, I'm too busy rowing the boat to make waves. Well, I stepped out of, uh, you know, my normal position of just worrying about mm -hmm. myself and put this book down and then pursued getting it published because I felt that it contained an important message. All right, but, and, but you know, I, yeah. I, I hear this story from so many people. Mm -hmm. That that they that you know there's so many problems this that and the other thing they figure a book is going to solve the problem which it's not going to I, I hate to be no, the bear of bad news it's it's not going to work at all and and 
Instead of the only way that these changes can be made is by becoming part of the system and changing the system as it was intended to be changed. Well, my approach to trying to help change the system was to try to help educate young people before it's too late. But isn't that the job of the schools, the educators? It is, but apparently they're not doing their jobs. Or the children aren't listening. Well, the children may not be listening because... Kids are lazy these days. Kids are lazy. I've never seen a bunch of more lazy children in my 60-odd years as there are in this society. They know how to text, and have you ever seen how they spell when they're texting? Communication with a child is next to none. They'd rather sit on their duffs drinking pop or these high-energy drinks and playing uh, the video games instead of going out and playing baseball. You know, I'm sorry. And, And do you know who I blame? The parents. Right. It's not the government. It's it's the parents. And when it comes to the 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 health uh, industry, and that's all it is, keep the patient alive because we get paid from the government. A dead patient brings us no money. Right. And that's what the medical well, system is. You know, and, right. and, and Big Pharma is right behind it, pushing it. Well, that's probably true. And and I have to agree with you 100% on that. There's certainly a, a mental... Uh, well, there's a physical laziness that, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I remember reading a book recently called the, you know, the last child in the woods. Um, and basically we have taken children out mm-hmm. of nature and put them in front of computers and televisions yep. and other electronic media. And, and they lose a sense of reality. I, I once was told uh, by my mom when I was uh, a teenager that I needed to become more sophisticated and go to the ballet and the opera. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, and I was a very outdoors kind of a guy, and, and I turned to her and I said, sophistication is a disease that occurs when one is removed from nature too long. And essentially, I feel that we have taken, we have, we have removed so many people from nature that they don't understand the basics of nature anymore. And nature is where we have to turn for our answers. We have to turn, we have to look at yep. the reality of nature and realize that if, if we do in our armed forces, that somebody else out there is going to say, hey, you know, that United States, uh, that looks like some pretty prime territory. Oh, well, you know, it's when it comes to the industry. armed force, when it comes to the war machine in the United States, that's the number one industry. Right. The, you know, I, I, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I agree that the, the armed forces need to be cut. I, I, I don't think well, that, I don't think that having, is you know, prudent, get, is it prudent? get them out of Afghanistan, get them out of the Middle I East, bring that. them back home. Cut it down to size because they can't take care of the soldiers that they have now. All you're going to do is by increasing the number or not depleting it is you're going to be causing the same problem. You're causing your own cancer within the armed forces. Well, we do need to maintain a a healthy military, however. When you look around the world, you Mm -hmm. can see that no one else is decreasing their military. Um, And so the United States, I look at the United States as the last great source of freedom in the face, on the face of the earth. When the United States falls, socialism and communism will well, take you know over. What? If you look at history, just look at history for a second, Rob. Look at, in the, the vast majority of human history has been dominated by kings and dictators yeah. and tyrants, not by a benevolent uh, a democracy, or in our, in our case, a republic, mm-hmm. where we had some freedoms. Well, freedom's about to go away. And just look around the rest of the world right now. Go to Africa. Go to mm-hmm. China. What, what, kind of, to, what kind of freedoms are going away? Well, I mean, look at the people in China. They can only have one child. Well, you I know mean, what? That's not a bad at, idea. That is not a bad idea. You know, you need a license to drive. You need a license to open a bar. You don't need any right. training or anything to have a kid. And, you know, you've got the system that feeds these people who just sit on welfare, pop out kids. The more kids they have, the bigger the welfare check is. Well, we're, we're, in, agreement. we're in agreement there. Perhaps that was a bad example. But let's take other examples. Okay. We know that even right now in the United States that our government is trying to shut down small farmers. We know that they're, they're manufacturing mm-hmm. laws that make it harder and harder and harder to do anything um, to, to build something or to – or to uh, create something, to start a business. I mean, we're being regulated to death in my own industry. Mm-hmm. What I'm seeing is is that the government is shutting down factories. 
that are producing these drugs, and they're saying, well, when you go back to retool your factory, um, when you when you go to re when you reapply for a permit to mm -hmm. reproduce this drug, you're going to have to retool the entire factory. And in doing so, I've seen the price of certain medicines increase sure. somewhere between three and ten times. And clients are looking at me saying, well, this tube used to be $3.50. Now it's 35 Exactly. I can't afford to give it to my cat anymore. Yeah. So th there's a balance between government and freedoms. And it's so easy for government to take away all those freedoms, to take away those what we at least were taught when we were young was that there were inalienable rights that God granted us and that our government is reaching a point where I believe if we don't keep our government under control, they're going to take away all of those. But you know who's letting it happen? The citizens. They are allowing it to happen because they're, you know, they'd rather go on the computer and do all this research instead of going out and being part of nature. They bitch like crazy in these blogs instead of actually getting off their duffs and becoming part of the established uh, the, the established system and making the changes legitimately. I am so fed up of people getting on their soapboxes on the Internet. I th you know, I've said this millions of times. The Internet is the biggest cesspool that has ever been created by mankind. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a pretty stunning statement, but you're probably correct. There, there is a, you know, it, it's wonderful for a person who's doing research to be able to get on there and and punch in a. a oh yeah, God a forbid they God, and, God forbid they actually have to go to a library and read a book. My God, well, imagine that. Believe me, I I have done that, and and so I, I spent many years uh, doing lots of research yeah. in libraries. But but it, it is it is pretty nice to be able to have access to. Um, some of the latest information mm -hmm. that's going on in terms of, like, for instance, I'm a, a, a palm tree freak, and, uh, and to be able to get on and look up a particular tree. But getting back to the Freedom Fairy Tale. Listen, we've got, um, we've if, got to take our commercial break here. We'll be back in a couple okay. of minutes. Okay. 1-800-610-7035, worldwide, toll free. Dr. John Rossi is our guest, www.freedomfairytale.com. My name is Rob McConnell. We'll be back after this break. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world.
Exxon Radio, uh, our guest this hour is uh, Dr. John Rossi. His website is www.freedomfairytale.com. Tell us more about the book, John. You know, the politics of it is, is one thing, and, you know, I've got my outlook on politics. You have yours, and everybody else has theirs. But I, just before we get to that, why have people forgotten the basic rule of government? We, the people, instead of allowing it to be I, the person. Right. Well, that's a great question, and I think part of that has to do with uh, the fact that um, a lot of people are spending so much of their time in the electronic media mm-hmm. that they're not getting involved in real life. Yeah. And we can we can look at you know the average American spends thirty, probably thirty to thirty two hours a week wow. um, on you know, watching television. That's mm-hmm. ten years of your life. Ten years. And think about where, you know, what, what else could you do with 10 years? I personally, you know, I'm working full-time as mm-hmm. a veterinarian. I'm not watching any television, yeah. but I've written a whole series of books, you know, um, basically what's wrong with my dog, what's wrong with my cat, what's wrong with my ferret, what's wrong with my snake. And people ask me, well, how do you have time to write? I'm like, well, I'm living a life where I'm not involved mm-hmm. with television. I don't have that extra 10 years coming off of my life because of this giant waste. And I think... Yeah. Many people, especially young people, people in their 20s have just totally forgotten and about – I mean, they're so busy watching sports games and American Idol. Mm-hmm. I mean, a recent – one of the recent um, debates in the United States, political debates, there were 6 million people watching that debate, and there were 16 people watching – 16 – excuse mm-hmm. me, 6 million people watching the yeah. debate, 16 million people watching American Idol. Um, so this is where perhaps the Freedom Fairy Tale could come in handy. It is a way to at least present the, the conservative side, if you will, mm-hmm. of the way that I, I think some of these philosophies fit in together and how they interact with each other. Uh, you may not agree with how it turns out in the end, which, by the way, it had a twist that even I didn't expect, which is where poverty uh, primarily – uh, eliminates a lot of these, a lot of these children who turned against freedom and, and capitalism. So, for instance, poverty, one of the children of socialism and communism, mm-hmm. eliminates environmentalism, eliminates animal rights activism. Why would that happen? Well, think about it. You know, where there is, where the people are so poor that they're starving, they have to cut down the trees for wood. They have to, you know, in many cases, go hunting to eat, you know, to subsist. And so I'm just trying to say this was a dream. You know, this is not my polit- – you know, politics has not been my primary, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, means of survival at this point. I mean I'm, I'm very interested right. in what's going on right now. I mean I've been primarily trying to uh, – you know, as a biologist, I spent my years as an environmentalist trying to protect environments. I also uh, became a, a veterinarian, and I try to take care of animals all the time and help people. As, as a parent, I'm trying to do my mm-hmm. you know, a job. I have to say my one of my sons is graduating from medical school this week. I'm hey, hey, John, I that. hate to do this, but we've run out of time. I want to thank you so much Uh-oh. for joining us. Continued success. Explanation, Dr. John Rossi has been my guest this hour. His website, www.freedomfairytale.com. Dot com. That's www.freedomfairytale.com. And I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past the hour as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Exxon at exxonradiotv.com. <laughs> 